Rain and snow in the forecast could cause a dicey morning commute, plus heavy snow over the mountaintops. Find out how long the snowfall will last. Tension between the U.S. and Iran is now impacting Washington state. We break down reports of Iranian Americans being detained at the border. All the talk about war has many worried about the return of the draft. So this morning we're asking you, do you think the draft will be reauthorized? And Providence Sacred Heart nurses could be announcing a strike today. It's been a roller coaster. Right now, plans are postponed, but they are meeting this morning to discuss contract negotiations. Up with Cram starts right now with Jen York, Evan Narani, and Dina Marie McNichol. 5 a.m. now on our Monday morning, the Seahawks are advancing in the playoffs. The team beat the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday 17-9. Seattle's victory was led by Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf. The Seahawks will face the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. Oh, that'll be a fun game as well. Yesterday was a fun game. Wasn't sweating it too much there at the end. That's right, in Gonzaga, 1-2. Yes, I was at mm -hmm. the game on Saturday. We were... <laughs> That it was, was a close game. I was going to say, <laughs> I heard it was there, very it close. Was, it was a great game to be there, and, and Pepperdine's a really talented team, but obviously Gonzaga's better. There yeah, we go. I love it. <laughs> well, good Monday morning. Great to have you with us now. Our team back together for yeah, the first time. Right? All of us together <laughs> in nearly a month. We're so happy to be here with you this morning to kick off the new year. Yeah, that's right. Happy 2020, guys. That's yes. right. I know a lot of people waking up today. Mm -hmm. School back in session today as well. That's right. Of course, what okay. can we expect in the weather department? So we've had a very mild winter thus far, but it looks like as we head into now 2020 and this week especially, we are not going to catch much of a break. It's going to be a very busy week weather-wise in the form of uh, both rain and snow. But to start off our Monday, the majority of this is going to come as snow. You can see winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings lighting up eastern Washington and north Idaho. All of this, really, really every area that's highlighted on your screen, is an area that's expected to be impacted by snow over the next several hours. So let's take a look at satellite radar. You can see uh, Spokane is just kind of curving right around where the snow is. So down south of us, it's coming as a rain snow mixture, especially off toward areas like Walla Walla and Pomeroy. As you move off toward uh, north of the Palouse, we're just going to start to see some of that snow form over the next uh, about hour or two. And the impacts are likely going to come just around state line, uh, I'd say around 7, 8, 9 a.m. Uh, snow is going to be an event all the way through the day. You can see it turns over to rain by the time we get past about 10 a.m. and those temperatures begin to warm up. We're looking for afternoon highs in the mid 40s, which will keep us above freezing and allow a lot of that snow to melt around the northwest. But take a look at our view out at Snoqualmie Pass. One to two feet possible across those mountaintops. Snoqualmie Pass and Stevens Pass impacted. Uh, snow coming down as we speak. So we're keeping an eye on the possibility of any closures or delays across those mountain passes to you know continue this we also see pretty high wind across the northwest so uh, wind speeds right now in the double digits in Spokane 16 mile per hour winds for us three mile per hour winds in Coeur d'Alene nine in Pullman and 13 in Lewiston all in all gusts by this afternoon are expected in the 40 mile per hour range so it is a busy day weather wise we'll continue to track the latest here on up with Graham Jen all right, Evan, thank you so much. 503 now. This morning, there are reports of Iranian Americans being detained at the Washington border, and it has the attention of Governor Inslee. This follows growing tension with the U.S. and Iran. Nicole Hernandez is joining us live now in the newsroom with more on what we know this morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Jen. So following reports of Iranian Americans being detained at the Washington-Canada border, Washington Governor Jay Inslee tweeted that his office is tracking those reports. He has also tweeted that the Department of Homeland Security told his office that they haven't ordered officers to detain or refuse entry to Iranian Americans. And the United States Customs and Border Protection tweeted that claims of people being detained are false. And Inslee said he is continuing to look for answers about those reports and wants to talk to anybody detained at the border if anybody is. The Iranian government announced yesterday that it will no longer abide by key terms of the 2015 nuclear deal, now saying they will not observe limitations on its enrichment as well as not limit its research and development in nuclear activities. Now, President Trump pulled the U.S. out of that deal back in 2018. Iranian leaders are vowing revenge for their general's death after he was killed in a U.S. airstrike. But President Trump is doubling down on his threat to attack the country's cultural sites if they retaliate. 
Yesterday, President Trump tweeted this, saying, These media posts will serve as notification to the United States Congress that should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back, and perhaps in a disproportionate manner. On Saturday, he tweeted, The United States just spent $2 trillion on military equipment. We are the biggest and by far the best in the world. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the Trump administration made the right decision to take out the terrorist. The Iranian leadership needs to understand that attacking Americans is not cost-free. House Democrats will vote on a war powers resolution this week to try and limit the president's military actions. For now, though, the U.S. has more troops on the way to the Middle East. But yesterday, Iraqi's parliament approved a plan to remove all American troops from its soil. President Trump is threatening harsh sanctions against Iraq if it actually removes U.S. troops. All right, Nicole, thank you so much. We'll continue to track that story this morning here at 5.05. Into your other headlines this morning, a water quality advisory is in effect this morning in Boundary County. This is after a train derailment last week led to diesel fuel leaking into the Kootenai River. Experts recommend not using water directly from the river. Meanwhile, crews are still working to contain and recover fuel in the water. They did manage, though, to keep it from flowing downstream. The Bonners Ferry Municipal Water Supply, Cabinet Mountain Water, and other public water services are not impacted by that leak. This morning, the Ferry County Sheriff's Office is searching for a wanted suspect with multiple warrants. Deputies say 30-year-old Cassandra K. Burkhart has warrants in Ferry and Spokane counties. Investigators say she is from Spokane but was last seen in Orion. Now, information on her whereabouts, people are they're asking for information on her whereabouts. You can ask, you're asked to call the number at the bottom of your screen. A new report shows Idaho's economy is strong right now. And it shows Idaho has some of the fastest growing home prices in the nation, but it also shows income is growing at a slower pace. In addition to the recent population boom, experts say this will impact the state's affordability in the future. Gonzaga freshman Brock Reve is leaving the team. School leaders confirmed he is no longer on the team's roster, and they say it was his personal decision. He's a standout from Kittitas. They add he has not practiced with the team since November. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag UpWithCrem on social media. You might have seen talk of a draft being started or World War III trending on social media over the weekend. Well, you don't need to worry. Amid escalating tensions and violence with, uh, with Iran, there was a crash on the Selective Service System site following a spike in searches. The spike came hours after it was announced a top Iranian general was killed in a U.S. drone strike at a Baghdad airport early on Friday. The Selective Service took to their Twitter to say it was all misinformation and they were working to resolve the issue. Right now, there is no active draft. The reauthorization of a draft would require action from both the president and Congress. It was abolished back in 1973 in response to mass protests against Vietnam. So in order for a draft to happen now, the House and Senate would have to approve a new bill and the president would have to sign the new draft into law. If there was a reauthorization, a draft lottery would be implemented like they did during the Vietnam War. The registry system for the lottery is always up to date. Per federal law, men are required to register for selective service when they turn 18, and their name is kept in it until they're 25. In Washington, when you turn 18, you are automatically registered through your driver's license. In Oregon, it is entirely voluntary. It varies state by state. So yes, eventually there could be a draft, um, and that would take action from both the President and Congress. So this morning we want you to weigh in. Do you think a draft could be authorized? Let us know what you think by voting in our CREM2 mobile app. 100% of you are saying no right now. It's only 5.09 in the morning, so there's a lot of time for you to weigh in during our four-hour show this morning. All right. All right. Again, thank you to everyone who's also weighed in this morning. So early on, we'll be yes. checking in with that later on. I'm sure certainly a lot of talk about that now, especially in the past few weeks here. And especially it was trending a lot over social media. So it's good to kind of get an idea of what's going on right now. Perfect. All right, Dana Marie, thank you. 5.09 now. Well, Segway just made your life a little bit lazier. The company introduced <laughs> what looks like an adult stroller. <laughs> 
And get this, it was inspired by Lazy Boy. Get it? Okay. I like it. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> it will officially be unveiled tomorrow at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. I wonder how fast that goes. I have no uh, hopefully not too fast. <laughs> <laughs> it could only be dangerous. Well, Utah man says he has a McDonald's hamburger that is two decades old. He said he bought the world's oldest burger on July 7, 1999. But he left the sandwich in his coat pocket and didn't find it until 4 <laughs> This is really gross. This is hard for me to get through. He attempted to sell it on eBay for $2,000 but decided to keep it. He recently opened it back up. He says it smells like cardboard, and the pickles are the only thing that looks different. Oh you, no. You can't it, even really see the pickles. No, they're kind of disintegrated yeah. there, but the burger I can't. looks like a burger. 79, 79 cents. cents. I mean, they're only like a dollar now, so. Yeah. Mm. Not really. Inflation doesn't really I, take I know, right? <laughs> exactly, right? Not too much of a return on his investment there. <laughs> no. All right, well, Iron Man warned us, and it happened. The actress who played his daughter in Avengers Endgame took Captain America's shield sledding. Lexi Rabe posted this video on Instagram of herself sledding down a hill on the captain's iconic weapon. You might remember in the movie, Tony Stark returns the shield to Steve Rogers. I don't know what any of this. I don't You're going to have to use your imagination. I'm There's a shield in there. There's, There's some something sledding. with a shield. Someone named Steve Rogers. He says, honestly, I have to get it out of the garage before Morgan ta takes it sledding. The video has over 200,000 views. I have absolutely no idea I wish no we had the video. I know. I'm totally lost, but I'm so glad you were committed and you were oh, gonna tell us that I was gonna see story. it to the end, I was, and I did. So if you know what that means, I hope you enjoyed that story. Yes, <laughs> if you're familiar with Marvel, maybe you can give us a clue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we'll work on getting you that video in our next hour. All right, coming up now on 512 on our Monday morning, getting our week started here. Tension is growing this morning between the U.S. and Iran. But were things always that way? After the break, we're connecting the dots on the history of the two countries. And nurses are threatening to strike here in Washington, including at Spokane's Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center. In the next half hour, what an announcement today could mean for nurses here in the West Side.